Hi everyone, welcome or what? Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Sean. Today I am doing the mid-year freakout tag. But first, I have something new and very cool to show you. For no apparent reason at all, I don't know, maybe it was a late Christmas present, but my aunt made me a birdhouse. Now, you have to understand, my aunt is not really the best gift giver. I mean, she has given me some weird things in the past. And historically, when she would like give me a present, I'm always like, oh boy, here we go. What's it gonna be? Because I mean, she has given me some weird things like a flower lawn ornament. Like, why would I want that? So when she said she had a present for me, I was like, okay, here we go again. What is it? I'm gonna have to try to act like I like it. But then I saw it and I was just like, Oh my god, this is actually really cool. So, that present is a birdhouse. Not just any birdhouse though. She drew like covers on the top here of my favorite books. What she did for this is she looked at my like 10 favorite books video, which I'll post up here. Um, and so she saw my favorite books and just looked up the covers for some of those books and drew them on here. So that was just such an amazing surprise. Check this out. This is the coolest thing ever. So starting right here, it has the cover of A Thousand Books to Read Before You Die by James Moustich. Going over a little bit, there is the cover of The City of Dreaming Books by Walter Morris, my favorite book in the entire world. Look at the detail on this. This is just incredible work. From there, it turns into some little doorways for the birds. And then, really special to me, but she did one of my own books. So there is Egyptian Demise. I was really surprised and just so thrilled to see that she did my own book here. From Egyptian Demise, we turn to this up here. The Princess Bride by William Goldman. Next to The Princess Bride up here, we have Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. From Harry Potter, we turn and there is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. And from Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine, the next and last thing is a logo, Sean's Used Books. After she gave this to me, she wanted to add a logo there because there's just nothing there. So she asked me to draw something, so that's what I came up with. Sean's used books. So if I ever open a bookstore, that could potentially be the logo. But anyway, this is just such a neat surprise. I mean, all the work that she put into this. I mean, look at all the detail there on City of Dreaming Books. And just the thought of that, to do a birdhouse, knowing I love the birds and books, my favorite things. So birds and books. It's just a perfect gift for me. So usually my aunt is terrible at gift giving, but this time she really knocked it out of the park. And all the work she put into this is just so phenomenal. And also I just love my own book being there. So my favorite books ever and my own book. It's just so cool. And a birdhouse of all things. So I just love it. It's one of my favorite gifts I've ever been given. So I love that. Thank you, Auntie. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, so let's get into it. The mid-year freakout tag. The first question. Best book you've read so far in 2023? This is difficult because it is actually kind of a down year for me for reading. One, I've not read all that many books. Two, the books I've read so far have not really been too great. And I am reading a few right now that have potential to be like five star books and my favorite books of the year but I'm not finished reading them yet and I don't really want to like give this spot to another book I've read earlier this year because I just know it's really not going to be the best book I've read this year so I'm actually going to put a book I have not finished yet here. And again, there are a few books I could choose from because there's definitely like four or five books I'm currently reading that have a strong chance to be my favorite book of the year. But so far, I'm far enough into it that I think I have a pretty good idea. It's definitely going to be a five-star book. And that book is A Fine Balance by Rohinton Mystery. 
So this is on my 23 books to read in 2023, and it is on the top 1,000 list, 1,000 books to read before you die by James Mustich. I had never heard of it before, but I saw that there is a signed copy of it at the bookstore, so I was like, well, I need to read it anyway, and I love signed books, so I got it. Then I looked it up online. Usually I wouldn't do that because I don't like to know anything about books before reading it. But since I didn't know anything about this book or author, I looked it up just to see like, you know, what's the importance of this book. And what is said on Wikipedia is that this book is frequently mentioned as one of the 10 greatest books to ever come out of Asia. So when I read that, I was kind of like, well, that's, you know, high expectations for that. So I began reading this, and the first thing that really stunned me is this author's writing style is very much like my own. There's really one other author I've read who I would compare to my own writing, my own writing style, I mean, and that would be Richard Wright, the author of Native Son. Just reading his book, it was like our vocabulary was exactly spot on. We use the exact same words. We have the same sentence structure. We just write very similar. So reading Richard Wright, it was kind of like, this is something I would write. This is my exact same writing style. Rohinton Mystery, A Fine Balance is very much the same way. As I was reading this, I was like, this is written exactly the way I write. And in a large way, that was really rewarding because, again, this is mentioned as one of the top 10 greatest books to ever come out of Asia. So, of course, I have, like, some self-doubt about my own writing abilities because, you know, my writings, my books don't really sell that well. So I've kind of been thinking, you know, well, I must not really be as good of a writer as I think. So reading this and knowing it's called one of the 10 greatest books to ever come out of Asia and knowing my writing is like identical with this author. I mean, just everything about the writing is spot on with mine. We write the exact same way, same way with Richard Wright. Our vocabulary is the same way. Our sentence structure is the same way. The way we use description is largely the same. It's just largely like a book I would write. So since this is such a well-regarded book, People, you know, critics have said, you know, the writing is so good and all that. That is really vindicating for me because it's like, if I write like this without even like trying, like without even trying to imitate it, like this is my own natural writing style. And if critics have thought, you know, this writing style is good enough to be top 10 ever for Asia, that kind of makes me think, hey, my writing must be pretty decent then as well. Because the book I'm currently working on, I'm really kind of leery about the length, Ottoman Destiny, um, size-wise, is pretty similar to A Fine Balance. So, hey, if Rohinton Mystery writes the same way I do and has, you know, same length, basically, I feel pretty good about that. If this is one of the 10 greatest books to ever come out of Asia, why shouldn't this be one of the 10 greatest books to ever come out of North America? The second question, best sequel you've read so far in 2023? Again, same issue with the last one. I've not read many sequels. If I did, maybe just one, and I don't think I really was enamored with it. So this is a question I didn't know if I'd have an answer, but then I thought, well, a book I'm currently reading is A Storm of Swords. But I'm having a big problem with this with italics. George R. R. Martin uses so many italics and it's driving me crazy. It drove me crazy in his other two books. But this one is definitely thinking like, I don't think this could be a five-star book because of the italics. It's just so annoying. His writing style, it'd be so good if he didn't use italics as much as he did. So I do not think A Storm of Swords is going to be the best sequel I've read so far this year. I'm only 40 pages into it, but the best sequel I think for this year will be The Labyrinth of Dreaming Books by Walter Moores. That's right, I am currently reading the sequel to The City of Dreaming Books, my favorite book of all time. The best book that I think has ever been written. I have had this book for several years and I've been so reluctant to read it because I've been nervous. How could he, Walter Moores write a sequel to the best book ever written? How could it not be a disappointment? And the last few books I've read by Walter Moore's, Rumo and The Alchemaster's Apprentice, I didn't really like very much. So I was really worried, like, 
the city of dreaming books may have been like lightning in a bottle and he's going to ruin it trying to do a sequel but so far i'm liking it pretty well and the first like start of the book was definitely like oh walter moore's i love you man so there's still a lot of time left a lot of words a lot of pages where walter moore's can begin to lose me he is definitely difficult to read i think I am a slow reader with Walter Morris. For whatever reason, reading like five pages of his books feels like reading like 50 pages of another author. By that, I mean it just takes me a long time to get through a lot fewer pages. So I don't know how it's going to go from here. I'm only 40 pages in, but so far there has been enough where I could definitely say this has the potential to be the best sequel of 2023. Question three, new release you haven't read yet, but want to. Okay, it's not a new release per se, but I've seen this book everywhere on BookTube and all over like book review websites and everything, but I've never actually found a copy of this book until like yesterday. But that book is Babel by, I don't know, the author. Now, I don't know anything about this book, actually. I've never watched any book reviews about this because generally I just do not like real popular current things because I think a lot of it is just like a fad and I think a lot of popular things are really not that good, but people get obsessed about it. But in 5, 10, 20 years, are people still talking about these books or things? Eh, probably not. So they're real famous for a time, and then they just kind of go away. But with this, I've just seen it around so much that I wonder, is this truly an actual good thing? A good book? I don't know. So yesterday, for the first time ever, I actually found a copy of this book at Target but I didn't get it because it was priced like almost $20. And I don't really want to buy this book for $20. One big thing is I think the book has already had enough success. If it was signed, I would definitely get it. So I'm just gonna wait and get it from the library, but I am definitely open to reading this book, Babel, because I just wanna see if all of the craze has been justified. Have you guys read Babel? What do you think? Is it a book I should read? Next question, most anticipated release for the second half of this year? Again, I don't follow many current releases, so I thought this answer would be the same as last year's answer, which is Gail Honeyman's next book. Gail Honeyman, the author of Eleanor Oliphant, is completely fine. But another book has came up as a most anticipated release for me, and that is the next book by Tim O'Brien, the author of The Things They Carried, currently my favorite writer of all time. I'm presently reading a book by him, If I Die in a Combat Zone, Box Me Up and Ship Me Home. I love Tim O'Brien, and I saw that he is coming out with a new book called Americana, I think, and this is Tim O'Brien's first book in, I think, 20 years. His last book was July, July, which I have a signed copy of. So I want to read every Tim O'Brien book. Every Tim O'Brien book is a must read for me. So this is a definite book I'm going to be on the lookout for. As soon as I see it, I'm going to buy it or I'm going to buy it from online. Next question is biggest surprise. For this one, I thought about putting a fine balance on here because I didn't know what to expect of that book at all, but I like it pretty well. But was that a surprise? Because a fine balance was called one of the 10 greatest books to ever come out of Asia. So would it really be a surprise then that I like it? Well, knowing me, probably, but since that is a book I at least had some expectations for, a book I had lower expectations for would be Snow Crash by Neil Stephenson. And again, this is on my 23 books to read in 2023 list. Now with Neil Stephenson, he is on the top 1000 list for Quicksilver, which I have a signed copy of here somewhere. But another booktuber I follow was talking about Neil Stephenson. They are one of his favorite authors and his favorite book is Snow Crash. He had never actually heard, I think, of Quicksilver, 
but he was like, oh, you got to read Snow Crash. That's my favorite book. I love that book. So I saw it at the bookstore and I was like, well, I'll get it since this booktuber really likes this book, thinks it's his best book. I am not really much a fan of the genre Neil Stevenson writes because I think he writes like both fantasy but also like science fiction and also like real technological driven stories. Real techno stories. But since this was a highly recommended book by another booktuber, I got it and started it. And it's not really like my favorite book in the world for sure. And there are definitely parts of it where, I don't know, I think he can get overboard like just talking about all this technology stuff and you know all this computer stuff and like video game stuff. I don't know, I don't really know how much I'd like it. But I am thinking like, man, I wish this was made into a movie because there's like so many details in this book that I just don't wholly know how to picture it. So I just love to see like some movie versions to see how, you know, other people have visualized this book. It's a real visual book. And by that, I mean, it's like a book that would be good for a movie. There's just so much stuff going on, so much to see that it's interesting. In terms of writing, I like it pretty well. For instance, the main character of this book is named Hero Protagonist. So I just like that. I love books like that that are just, you know, kind of bizarre. You know, like Princess Bride by William Goldman. Books where the author is just clearly having fun. I like that. I think books should be fun. So, so far, Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson is the biggest surprise for me of 2023. Next question, biggest disappointment. Okay, a contender for this one is A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin, because I think I have heard some fans of the series actually say this is his best book in the series. So I'm reading it and kind of like, eh, I'm kind of tired of his writing style and his use of italics. So this is definitely not my favorite book so far in the series. So would this be my biggest disappointment? But then I thought, no, there's another book I've read that's definitely been more disappointing than that. That book I'm at least liking well enough. I'll probably give it four stars in the end. But a book that I kind of had high hopes for and just hated was on my 23 books to read in 2023 list and is Kurt Vonnegut, Slaughterhouse Five. I have seen this book or I've known about this book for years and years. I mean, Kurt Vonnegut, Slaughterhouse Five. It goes hand in hand. It's his most famous book. And I didn't really know much about it, but I knew it's like World War II satire and it's pretty popular. It kind of has a cult following, I think. And at the bookstore, I saw a signed book by Kurt Vonnegut, Bluebeard. So I was really thrilled to get a signed book by Kurt Vonnegut, but I had never read Slaughterhouse Five. So I didn't know would I like him or not. Well, I got this book from the bookstore and I put it on my 23 books to read in 2023 list. I started reading it. The first chapter gave major red flags and I was just not liking it at all. The biggest problem I guess with the book is it just wasn't funny. Nothing about the book was funny. It never made me smirk, let alone laugh. So it's supposed to be like this satirical World War II book, but it just, it's not funny. And I recently read another book, um, Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. I have two signed books by Joseph Heller. But at least that book had moments where I laughed. While Catch-22 at least had moments that I liked, moments that made me laugh, it had potential, the potential to be a funny book. This one did not. It never made me smile, never made me laugh, never made me giggle, nothing. It was just stupid. And the whole book is like a writer who thinks they're funny, but they're not. And something that happened with me reading this book, I thought reading it that the first chapter would end with a certain line, like just, he's going to end with this line. I can see it coming. But he didn't. He actually ended with a different line. So when I read that, I was like, okay, I know what he's going to do. He's going to end the book with that same line. So I checked the back of the book and he did. So I was just like, that's so expected. The line wasn't even funny or anything. It's just stupid. But I knew he was going to end the book with that line and he did. The next chapter, maybe like chapter 
three or so, it, he kept repeating this line like, so it goes. And he uses that line like 10 or 15, maybe 20 times in the chapter. And it's just so tiresome and it's not funny at all, but it's a writer who thinks they're funny. So it was just not funny at all, it's not good at all. There's nothing positive I could say about this book, Slaughterhouse-Five, whatsoever. And I went in with real high expectations, real high hopes, having a signed book by him, knowing this is his like classic, most well-liked book. And I just hated it. It was so stupid. It was so unfunny. Nothing good about it at all. So this is my most disappointing book for 2023. I just hated it. Stupid book. Next question. Favorite new author? Again, this is kind of a difficult question to answer because I haven't read very many books that I liked a lot, especially by newer authors to me. So the one that I guess just comes to mind would be Rohinton Mystery. I think he's only written like four books, including this one. So unfortunately, he's not going to be an author where I could just dive in and, you know, have a whole backlog of all these books to read. So I think just four books maybe. But because of this book, and since we share so much of the same writing style, I'm interested in reading everything by him. And also to see if his other books are like my own writing style, or if this one is more unique in that regard. But so far, if there's any writer who would be the winner of 2023 where I'd go out and buy all their books, it would be Rohinton Mystery. The next questions I don't really have answers to, so I'll just kind of burn through what those are. There's newest fictional crush, newest fictional character, book that made you cry, book that made you happy, and most beautiful book you've bought so far this year. I'm sorry, but none of those I really have good answers to, so I'm just gonna skip those. The last question is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? So of my 23 books to read in 2023, list books I have not finished yet, and all of these I am currently reading are A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin, Neil Stevenson's Snow Crash, Rohinton Mystery, A Fine Balance, Walter Moore's The Labyrinth of Dreaming Books, Roald Dahl, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Dirk Kustler, The Devil's Sea, Russell Banks, Affliction. I have not actually started this one yet, but I have it on my currently reading pile. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Baron Dett. Collected Stories by Carson McCullers. And If I Die in a Combat Zone, Box Me Up and Ship Me Home by Tim O'Brien. I am a slow reader, but I do read a lot of books simultaneously. Don't ask why. I guess it's just if I try to read one or two books, I just get bored with it. So I need to read multiple books at a time just to try to have like reason to be motivated to read. So my currently reading is all of those books. So yeah. Anyway, that is it for the mid-year freakout tag. So thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you in another video. Bye.